that again. All right, five, four, three, two, one. No. From the top. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we couldn't think of a song, but it's episode number seven. I'm listening. To <laughs> I tried to, uh, I tried to do Rock Lobster, but then my brain was like, nope. You can only do one thing. You can either do the riff or you can sing. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's our first spot steam. We did so well. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, other than that, I'm also noticing something up in the corner that made me go, "Oops, I made a mistake." But you at home will never know. Uh, so, with we'll that, the post. <laughs> with that being said, welcome back to Like Five Hundred Stones, uh, the show where we go over the songs that used to be on the Rolling Stone Top Five Hundred list, but for some reason or other got bumped off. Uh, I am your host, Andrew James Barr. With me is my other host, Brooklyn Vale. Brooklyn, how you doing today? Uh, we're doing great. We kind of bought your theme, so I'm a little little sad, but we have Melissa here. Um, it's going to be it's going to be very fun. Um, similar to the previous list, uh, we're getting down to like those like lower two hundred ish songs, and mm-hmm. like these are starting to be like really like you took took these songs off the list. Like at the start, it was like there might have been like one or two, but now it's like. It's starting to get into like probably like a quarter of the list, or uh, as you guys say in the states, uh, three tenths. <laughs> that we still say a quarter. Like what the hell? <laughs> but but there's a big difference between three tenths and a third, guys. Like we're, there's a massive difference. You know that that three percent is how they get you. Melissa, which do you, you use a quarter measurement system? Right? I don't. I don't know what's happening. I don't. I got. I got frustrated at a road sign that I saw in the states that said three tenths of a mile, really and did. I was like, "Why wouldn't you just say a third of a mile? Who uses three tenths as a fraction?" Uh, we're not going to get into <laughs> the math. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Melissa Woody, hi. It's good to have hi. you. Uh, first time uh, in a like a, a regular episode. We saw you in the finale. Um, but how are you feeling? What are your thoughts on uh, the show, the list, and just in general? Yeah, um, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I feel pretty underqualified because I don't know that much about music, but I love music. Uh, so we'll see. See how this goes. Hey, look, sometimes the best people to talk about music are the average listeners because they're the people that you're trying to sell your music to. So if they don't like it, then you're screwed. So I think the. <laughs> I think that's a perfect person to have on our show. So, excellent segue. <laughs> excellent segue. Uh, so, with that being said, oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Producer Man. That's actually very nice of you for a change. And that's great. Cool. Thanks, Mr. Producer Man. Uh, let's just put up the first one. So the first song that we're going to talk about is uh, was formerly 267 on the list. Uh, He's a rebel by the Crystals. Or the crystals. I don't know how fancy it was. Um, this is fine. Uh, it's one that I'm. I totally understand coming off the list. Look, when we have other people like the Ronettes, uh, <coughs> having been on the list, and the Shirelles, um, this is fun. I like it. It's not a bad song. It's just that there's nothing about this particular song that makes me go, "Oh yeah, that's top five hundred worthy." They sound good. Instrumentation's good. The band is the strength of this song. The band and the instrumentation are what draws me to this song personally. Um, but I, I don't know about Top 500. And 267 was like real high in my opinion. But uh, Brooklyn, what about you? Um, all right. Another, sh- another show where we open with a disagreement. Uh, I disagree with you. Um, I love the Crystals now because uh, they had this and uh, to do Ron Ron Ron. Or yeah. Yeah, to do Ron Ron. Uh, that oh actually, yeah, that was them. Yeah, that so like that made the list. Yeah, this song fucking slaps. Like you're like you're right. It's fun. It's fast. Um, I just I like the energy that it has. And then like especially when you get to that bridge and it kind of like kind of break breaks up a little bit. Um, but this is like one of my favorites in the like wall of sound era. And like I've been pretty harsh oh. in this like in this yeah. era in particular. Yeah, uh, I'm like this is great. All right, well, I'm glad I went to Melissa last for this because she's <laughs> going to be the tiebreaker, essentially. Uh, yay or nay, Melissa? Uh, I'm a yay. I, I like the song. I think it's I think it's catchy. Um, it, I don't know. It's something I would listen to, <laughs> um, you know, like 
cleaning my house on a Sunday morning or something. Just like good vibes, it's catchy. Um, I'm okay with it being off the list though. Like I don't think <sighs> I don't I don't think I like would say this is like a top 500 song of all time, but it's but it's catchy and I like it. So we pretty much balanced out everyone's <laughs> opinion on this, this sense. Good. All right, let's move on then. Before, before anyone says anything else. Uh, number 266 on the previous list is uh, Ooh Baby Baby by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. I know Brooklyn's feelings about Smokey Robinson, so we're going to save him for last. <laughs> Melissa, what are your thoughts on this song? Um, I really like the song. Um, I think um, it, it's interesting. It has like a sad vibe to it, um, but it also... I don't know. It's kind of like a love making kind of vibe. So <laughs> at the same time, so it's like, is this a breakup sex song? I don't know. But that's kind of yeah. the vibe I get. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you are something today, producer man. Uh, so um, I love Smokey Robinson and, and the Miracles. I think that the harmonies from them are some of the greatest harmonies in music. Not quite the greatest, but like, Definitely top five in my opinion. Um, Eagles, Queen, um, even the even even your precious birds. My precious birds. What the hell are we talking? Okay, man, uh, man, isn't that how <laughs> Timber? Isn't that isn't that how Mr. Tambourine Man got onto the list because of all those luscious harmonies? Yeah, but no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I like that song. <laughs> Slander. Um, so yeah. But with that being said, as much as I do really like this song a lot, I I think you hit the nail on the head where it's got that really nice smoothness to it that Smokey's known for. But there's that 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 sadness that's deeply rooted in the lyrics. As much as I like this song, it's another one that I'm actually kind of okay with having missed the list, considering some of the other Smokey Robinson songs that we have on the uh, updated one. Um. But still a classic that people should listen to nonetheless. Top 1,000? Sure. Brooklyn? All right. So we are getting out a uh, Off the Stones first. Uh, this is called The Notepad. Uh, this is going to tell a straight uh, where Smokey Robinson has been. Uh, so he started, uh, he started right about there. Um, and then I think the last song that we talked about put him all the way up to here. Almost a nine. Um, and then we got to this song, and okay. he is a little bit lower. He's probably in, like, the sevens now. Um, I like the song. I agree with Melissa in that, like, it's okay. very <laughs> sad, but there's, like, he's, like, yearning for something. Um, yeah, it's cool. I also understand why this why this came off the list, but I would also be, like, if this was, like, oh, this was, like, 495 or something, or, like, in that, in that section, I'd be like, all right, that's, that's understandable, because I think there is a... I think there is like a certain kind of like feeling that that would uh, fit this song perfectly, but I just haven't quite figured it out yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, okay. You made me happy. I thought we were going to fight considering <laughs> you called, considering you've said a couple times that he's borderline overrated. So, yeah. okay. We're, we're at peace. <laughs> We're at peace for now. For now. We're always, we're always at war with Smokey Robinson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but Jeff Buckley uh, this time at number 264. So uh, I'm going to go to Melissa first, but I'm going to, if you don't remember, um, the original version by Leonard Cohen is now on the most updated list. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I, I mean, this is a great song. Um, is this the one that they used in Shrek? No, I believe so. Um, it's not. Oh, it's not. I will, oh, not. I, will, okay. I will look it up. Okay. Uh, well. Oh it, yeah, it reminds, no, it was a different. Person. It reminds me of Shrek. <laughs> uh, but no, it's but oh, like the wow. but, but the original song is good. Oh it's wow! Fun. I've never thought know. about how people will associate that song with Shrek now. Uh, uh, that's Ru Rufus Wainwright uh, did the oh, okay. version of Hollywood. Okay. And Shrek. Okay. That. Um, yeah, wow, I mean, okay. I, don't, I don't have a lot of opinions about, like, it's, I don't know, it's a good song. But, like, unfortunately, I feel like that's kind of how I know the song from is from Shrek, <laughs> sadly. That's fine. Um, <laughs> Brooklyn. 
Um, yeah, I am gonna I'm gonna be very unsurprisingly Canadian uh, and say that the cover is the one that like should be on here on the list. Um, I know a lot of people consider this like one of the greatest covers of all time, and to a sense, I can agree with them. Um, he does some really interesting things with like the emotions of the song, like has this really like misty dreary kind of open that uh has like a kind of like a minor minor tone to it um but the song also pulls the november rain where it dips like three quarters of the way through and then pops right back in it's like god damn it if you just fade out like that would have been so peaceful um but it just uh it kind of keeps dragging on not like shrek though not not like shrek <laughs> It's gonna be a Shrek episode, isn't it? So, so you remember how? Remember how? Um, on like 500 stones, we always compared everything to Mamas and the Papas. Um, yes. we're comparing everything to Shrek on uh, on off the stones. But that, I mean, sure. okay, I'll just go with. I it. mean, Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Okay, um, so, uh, I'm uncomfortable. Um, so, um, I'm good. Uh, you said you're going to be the Canadian. I'm going to be the pretentious one, as I generally am. Um, I like the Leonard Cohen version better. Uh, I kind of agree with you that when people say that they think this is one of the greatest covers of all time, I'm not going to disagree with them. It's great. It's got that really nice, like, gothic ennui to it, almost. Um and I like that style. I think that Jeff Buckley did a really interesting, added a, an interesting element to it. Um, it almost has like that gospel kind of sound to it ever so slightly. Um, but I think you're right. It hits a point where it kind of starts to peter out a little bit before it picks back up. Um, so... I'm okay with having the Leonard Cohen version on the list. Um, I'm not opposed if this had remained, but I think we have the right version on there. Uh, and with that, we're going to move on to what was just one spot above it, which is Oh, What a Night by the Dells. Uh, I'll start with this. At last, would like its instrumentation back, please. Um, so I heard, I was I was listening to this, <laughs> and I was like, I have no idea what this song is. And then I heard that string and I was like, oh, this is, is that at last? Uh, and then I suddenly realized what song this was. And I was like, oh, wow. I know this song way more for just the instrumentation and not the lyrics or the melodies, like at all. And I've never had that happen before. Um, the instrumentation and the production Fantastic. It's amazing, in fact. The the lyrics and the vocals and the vocal melody, I can't remember to save my life at all. Even with that really odd, awkward, like, spoken word yeah. opening to it. I was going to say, is um, this the one with the opening that he's, like, kind of slow and deep and, like, yeah. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he says, but, yeah. Okay. It's That's one. the one. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you why... Uh, actually, Mr. Producer Man, I know that you have it queued up, probably. That's <laughs> why. Uh, sex. Yeah. But um, let's go to uh, Melissa. Let's go to you next, since uh, you know what we're talking about. Um, okay, it all makes sense now that you're saying the at last thing, because like this song really gave me like slow dance at a wedding kind of vibes, like mm -hmm. <laughs> that the DJ would put on or something. Um, so that makes sense. Uh, and I'll have to listen to it again and See if I, because I, I didn't pick that up, but. It's, it's those strings in particular. It's like the strings in the piano. It's like, it's like they took at last and went, we're going to tweak this just ever so slightly to avoid copyright infringement. Uh, <laughs> Brooklyn. So I don't know what the fuck you're drinking. Um, it's, this does not sound, <laughs> it is, it uh, sounds kind of similar to. It kind of sounds similar to At Last, but not really. Like, the strings somewhat, but the bass line, I think, kind of changes it, where it, it, it's, it's much more lively. That's, that's um, tweak, but that's But that's a that's a good... That's not even a tweak, though, but that's like, here's the bass line, and let's add in everything else off of that. I just... I don't I don't see the At Last thing. Like, that was like that time... What was it? Fucking... Was it Feel It Still and another song? Oh, you, Please Mr. Postman. 
please, Mr. Postman. Yeah, like like two entirely different songs similar to this and that last. But, but they um, actually have artistic credit on Feel It Still. That's not the same. Okay, sorry. But um, <laughs> I like like you guys are right, the, right that this is, this is kind of about sex. But like the the vibe that this kind of puts me in is that like you are just coming back from like a very like loungy kind of dinner with friends, and then you, you get back, and then like before you go to bed, it's like hey, you want to have like that dance dance in, in the kitchen, and you just kind of like slowly kind of sway and <sighs> just like makes it's like fucking like cheesy ass fucking puppy dog love stuff. Yeah. yeah yeah that's fair enough i can i can take that <laughs> uh all right number 262 then uh i can see for miles by the who well glenn i'm gonna let you go first because uh once again this is a a, a band an artist that i know that you have uh, specific feelings about i'm gonna tell you why you're wrong andrew james Barr. i have some breaking news for you um i actually kind of like this song um let's go this- <laughs> This is uh, this is a rare Roger Daltrey kind of hit in terms of the lyrics department, uh, in terms of like how the title of the song changes context throughout throughout the song, and I think this ma- it makes the song so badass. Um, it's very it's still in that like psychedelic kind of like trippy rock era, but um, yeah, I think this actually kind of works. Um, it's not by any means like a like like an s tier song like i wouldn't put this up with like like you're like bohemian rhapsodies or like your patsy klein crazies uh but yeah it's it's all right first of all that is not one of the songs i was expecting you to bring up for s tier so my heart is like a little it's it's beating right now um so i'll go next on this one um yeah this is one of the who's best songs in my personal opinion um, especially when it comes to, as Brooklyn said, Rog- oh god, oh no, I don't like this. All right, uh, especially when it comes to uh, Roger Daltrey's lyrics, um, I think that uh, the way that he plays around with the, uh, as Brooklyn said, the way that he plays around with that particular line of I can see for miles is great. And the build for this song, I love the way that this song starts to like build and build, especially with like Keith Moon's explosive drumming in this. Uh, it's super impressive. Um, yeah, I think that this is a fantastic song. Um, Melissa, <laughs> let's go to you next. Um, I love The Who. Um, I One of my favorite concert memories was seeing The Who with my dad. Um, but I fucking hate this song. It, oh. it stuck in my head, in my head, going four miles and miles and <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just way too repetitive, and it really did get stuck in my head. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, I can completely understand that. Oh, that absolutely, that does make sense to me, though. Yeah, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say too much on that. You, you, you get passed for me. Uh, <laughs> speaking of things that uh, they kind of just repeat over and over again, "Wild Things" by the Trogs at number two sixty one. Um, I'll start off with this one. Uh, let's go back to the golden era of '60s garage rock. Uh, where random people would just, like, record things in their garage and somehow they would become hits across the country. That is Wild Thing by the Trogs. Um, I get why it was on the list to begin with. I really like this song. I think it's got a real good energy to it. I think that it's one of those things that uh, it's got that kind of sing-along kind of melody where, like, the average person can kind of like understand the vocal melody like real quickly and sing along with it. Um, and I think the production on the guitars is actually like really good, but there's just something about it that I, I never search it out myself. If it's on, I have a good time with it, but it's not one that I find myself coming back to a lot. Uh, I get its place in the public conscious, I wouldn't put it in top 500. Melissa, what about you, though? Um, I really like the song a lot. I think, I don't know, there's something kind of, like, dirty, like you're saying, like, the garage kind of vibe to it. Like, it's definitely sexy, too. It's like, I don't know, it gives me the vibe of, like, playing pool in, like, a hole-in-the-wall bar, and you're, like, seeing a sexy lady or man type of thing. I don't know. Like, I just, I like the song. 
Uh, Brooklyn? <laughs> um, I feel underqualified to talk about this song. I need to be either Josh Bakuga or Charlie Sheen before he did a lot of cocaine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is, uh, to kind of equate this to burgers, this is just a plain hamburger. Uh, it's, the just, it, it's, it's the meat. There's no, like, there's no mustard. There's no onions. There's no cheese. There's no bacon. It's just, it's just the meat and the bun. Like, there's nothing really else to kind of say. Um, says Wild Thing a lot. Um, and uh, I similar to how uh, Melissa feels about I Can See for Miles, I kind of feel the same way about this song, where it's just, yeah. And then I, I, just, I just, I, I just want to want to see Charlie Sheen walk out to this again. Like, that's all I want to see. <laughs> and Major then I, I think ahead. there's like a ocarina or something, some kind of Yeah, it's like an ocarina or a flute or like some kind of wind instrument. And I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to bring that up and I forgot. God damn it. Those guys stuck mushrooms on the burger. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. That's all I need to say. Moving on. Number 260 on the previous list. Mississippi. By Bob Dylan. Um, Brooklyn, how about you start us off with this one? America is a country that exists, uh, and they just there needs to be a song with every state in its name. Every um, state. Yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know. We've talked about so much Bob Dylan, and this is just a, a needless Bob Dylan song. I don't understand why it was on the list. Um, it's this is in like where Bob Dylan has smoked probably 8,000 cigarettes, not quite the full 10,000, but it's uh, she's getting rough. Uh, Melissa, yeah, I'm about the same. I have, I don't want to spoil something later, but let's just say there's another song on this list that I don't like even more, but uh, but, yeah, this, uh, but this is fine. It's just fine. <laughs> I think the biggest problem with this song is that it's 12 verses and no chorus. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, what? <laughs> it's 12 verses, no chorus. There's no hook. Wow. Um, and it's also Bob Dylan from 2001. And I think that's why it made the list because it was still in in voters in the older voters minds at that point as one of the most recent Bob Dylan songs and they were like we like Bob Dylan we're going to put the, his newest one on here um I sense. like it but I don't think that it's like anywhere near top 500 worthy like no I, th I think even I think even top 1000 is a stretch no yeah no <laughs> I love Bob Dylan but like this there's there's 999 better songs than this, uh, such <laughs> as number 258, "Highway to Hell" by ACDC. Uh, I have the I have a gut feeling, and I, I, we'll see if I'm wrong or not. I think Melissa likes this one, so I'm going to start with her. Yeah, no, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of ACDC. I was raised by a single dad that like loves classic rock. I mean, he's like a big reason why I love music is because of him. Um, so that this kind of reminds me of, of him in a lot of ways, but it also just reminds me of going to like any sporting event. I feel like ACDC is like always playing at like a football game or hockey game or something like that. But I mean, this is just a fun song. Like, I'm kind of surprised that this isn't on the top 500 list personally. I'm kind of surprised as well. Um, but here's what I'm going to say. It's an ACDC song. Andrew? Yeah. And... Andrew? <laughs> kind of the way that I feel with uh, Chuck Berry, whenever he comes on, I'm like, oh, that's a Chuck Berry song, all right. Um, I think that this is really good. Uh, if it was on the current 500 list, I'd be okay with that. Uh, and I think that this is one of the best... This is... Like Bon Scott era ACDC. Uh, it's not? I thought it was for some this reason. This is Brian Johnson. It is Brian Johnson? It's hard to tell I the two apart sometimes. I believe um, it's Brian Johnson. I'm almost positive that it's Bon Scott, but look that up while you're doing that. We have a Google machine that we spend thousands of dollars on. Um, but uh, anyway, the point being. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm an idiot. It is Bon Scott. Okay, that's what I thought. Dum-dum. Um, so I love you, though. 
Um, but it's got that Angus Young groove that carries the song throughout. Uh, bon Scott's just laying it all down on the line. And let's be honest, it's kind of hard not to scream along to this song when they get to the hook. Like, who hasn't... <laughs> Who hasn't been at a ball game or a bar and the song has come on and ev- some everyone's just like, I'll wait, I'll help. Exactly. Yeah, it's infectious. <laughs> so uh, absolutely deserving of having been on the list. Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, this is a fine, uh, like this is a fine Bon Scott ACDC song. Like, I, like I'm, I'm not going to lie. When it, whenever this came on, I think, Thought it was I uh, thought it was Brian Johnson, and then I uh, then like in that last discussion I was like, oh shit, this is actually Bob Scott. But um, yeah, it's it's fine in the realm of ACDC. This actually makes me think of like Grand Theft Auto. I think it was like Vice City or San Andreas. I don't one of those game. games. Yeah, one of those games had this song in the in the trailer. Um, but uh, yeah, that like Iron Man two. Um, but if we're talking about like great Bob Scott ACD song, ACDC song is fucking like TNT. Uh, I've got big balls. Uh, I knew you were gonna bring got, that one up. I don't know how, but I knew you were gonna bring that one up. He's got he's got the jack. Um, what was he, oh man? What was the other one? Um, um, blah, 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 blah. I'm not sure. There's there's other like great bots. Like there's definitely a. I think there's two equally sized lakes of great Bond Scott songs and great Brian Johnson songs. Okay. Go, go okay. watch Maximum Overdrive. It's all ACD songs. Hell yeah! What a great <laughs> movie that is. Only um, movie directed by Stephen King. And there's a for a reason. reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on to number two fifty seven, Paranoid Android by Radiohead, and I'm going to start us off with this one by saying, "Wow, I am shocked that this fell off the list." Because um, when you talk to Radiohead fans. This is easily in the top 10 talked about songs from Radiohead fans. Um, it's sort of their Bohemian Rhapsody uh, or their uh, like Who style multi piece. Uh, it's their magnum opus. It's, I don't know if I'd call it their magnum opus, but I understand why you would say that. Um, yeah, so this, I think. <laughs> I, I really like this, and I can't exactly pinpoint what it is about it. I think it is the structure of the song. Um, it is just really impressive. The instrumentation is real good, uh, especially when they get like real wild and experimental with it. It's in a way that's still controlled and enjoyable. Um, and lyrically, uh, it it's kind of all over the place, but when you look at the backstory of Tom York having started to create this song after being in a bar where everyone around him is just like high off their ass on cocaine. It kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, And it kind of does have that wild paranoid atmosphere to it. Uh, And I also, the ending lines are so sarcastic about how God loves all of his children. And it is, it, it it's just a gut punch moment of ooh the sarcasm, but ugh. um so uh Brooklyn, let's go to you next. Uh yeah, I've been kinda like mad to mid on uh Radiohead, but that fucking changes uh with this song. Adore this song. Probably a cold take. Uh but yeah. I just think that I think the lick in this is really good. Um, you're right, like the kind of the, the paranoia of it all, and kind of like the the instant kind of like rush of it. Um, I think this is one of the best guitar solos ever. Um, it does some like really cool stuff with the music, uh, some like monochromatic elements where they kind of go out of the key and then hop back in for a little bit. Um, it's very experimental, but it's high risk, high reward pays off it's yeah um i think Nazario will be very happy now i am uh, i'm sold on radiohead uh yes but bill won't uh melissa <laughs> yeah so, well. sorry bill <laughs> um i do love i do love radiohead um absolutely i mean i love pink floyd and i feel like you know i don't i wouldn't say like they're exactly like pink floyd but they're kind of in that same realm of kind of i don't know anyways uh this song though i i actually did not um initially like it like when i first heard it for the first time i thought it was fine um it's definitely one that's like grown on me uh through the years for sure um 
and I, I really do like how it kind of like slows down, speeds up, kind of like you're saying, the structure of the song. Like that's that's the part of this that I really like. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it being off the list personally, just because I personally have uh, more like radio songs. Radiohead songs that I like more, but that's just more like on a personal level. Oh yeah, we've talked about some Radiohead songs on this series. Well, it was like, uh, well, like Karma Police and Creep are on the list, yeah, in particular. Creep, um, I no, Creep. Oh, Creep isn't. Thing. No, well, no, it is, but it, I don't think yeah. that it should be. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, fine. I like Karma Police better though. Yeah, Karma uh, Police. Replace, <laughs> replace Creep with fake plastic trees, and we're a bit more okay. Yes, agreed. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to something that's wildly different uh <laughs> at number 255 previously mac the knife by bobby darren uh i'm gonna start with melissa on this one yeah um i'm trying to remember what this one is but i i do remember liking it um yeah sorry i'm trying to remember which it's which the one jazzy one. Oh, oh yeah this uh, is a uh, so has <laughs> pretty teeth do that one can i can i cut in for a second while you yes, <laughs> Please. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of scared because I feel like some Hollywood producer is going to pick this up and it's like, hey, we need a trailer for this like suburban horror movie where things are going a little bit wrong. Oh my and god, like, this is exactly this is what they're the going to use. Perfect, yeah, this is the perfect song for it where it's just like uplifting, but there's that under there's a sense of like dread of like, oh, we're just fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's it's weird. I'm glad that I discovered it for this list. Not top 500, but a cool song, uh, regardless. Oh boy, I get to do something I haven't done on this show, but I have been dying to. I get to let my musical theater knowledge nerd side come out. Uh, so let me start. Can I, um, can I, can yeah. I make a sandwich first? No, uh, you like... sit down. <laughs> you, you get to learn history today here, Brooklyn. Uh, so. Let me start by saying that this version of this song is okay. Um, but if you listen to the lyrics, it is about a guy who is killing people. Uh, <laughs> this is about murder, uh, specifically a murderer. Uh, this song is from a gothic opera called the Three Penny Opera. Uh, it is a dark, dark twisted story based off of a ger of, of a german story uh and boy is it macabre uh and the fact that the fucking 50s completely misunderstood the point and we're like hey that catchy's melody let me think a song about that folks hey try the veal fucking hell i hate <laughs> that i hate that so much that completely missed the point of this Zavil. dark gothic murderous piece. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, uh, Bobby Darren's a good singer, but uh, Jesus Christ. So, I'm now that. interested in this play that you're talking about or whatever. It's Sounds so cool. Good. It's so good. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Cindy Lauper was in a fucking version of this show. It's wild. Okay. Uh, but let's move on before my, my my theater nerd side turns into theater nerd rage. Uh, <laughs> 254, Money Honey by the Drifters with Clyde McFadder. Uh, the, the other parenthesis is just gone, Mr. Producer, man. Good to know that you're, you know, putting effort into this. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, I think that this song is fine. It is fine. Uh, it's kind of stagnant is the problem. Uh <laughs> You know what? Fuck you today, Mr. Producer, man. I don't care. Uh, so, uh, so, it is... You heard me. Um, but as I was saying, this is kind of just stagnant. It's... it Like, the drifters are really good, and I like, I like the vocals in this, but it's just the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And that's a problem this time. Um... It's not like an electronic dance piece where the point's not like the the, the vocal melody. Uh, that's the point of this song, and it is stagnant, and that's a big problem for me. So, not much else to say. Uh, Melissa? I'm kind of with you, yeah. It's kind of repetitive, and it's fine. It's, it's kind of catchy, but I'm fine with it being off the list. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Brooklyn? 
Hey, Mom, I kind of want to listen to White Christmas, but it's the start of September. Can we listen to something by that band? Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, this is like, this is just something to kind of throw on while you're washing the dishes. Uh, it's fine. Other than that, um, no, no real use. If you're a B tier movie that takes place in the 50s and 60s, um, this is what probably what you can afford, and that's probably what you use. Uh, <laughs> so, number 250, Hot Fun in the Summertime by Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, Brooklyn, how about you start us off with this one? I'm going to use my Uno reverse card. <laughs> Melissa, what do you think about this one? Um, I kind of like the name, the title of the song. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like being outside and like just hanging out. Like it's good vibes, but it's fine. Like it's not like this emotionally moving song or anything. I'm not like going to seek it out, but it's like, uh, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's not one of like Sly and the Family Stones, like big epic pieces like Dance to the Music or, um, uh, things like that, um, but it's really good. I like this a lot. It's got a good, oh, nice. yeah. yeah. It's oh, uh, <laughs> oh, he looks good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's it's smooth. It's got a good groove to it. Sly sounds great as usual. Um, it's not what I think of when I think of Sly and the Family Stone, which I think is the problem. But if that's your biggest problem, it's not bad. Brooklyn. I forgot about a take that I figured out two weeks ago. Uh -oh. um, so, um, uh, I in swear terms to of God, if you bring up the Beach Boys version, no. Uh, if you, if you, <laughs> in terms of Sly and the Family Stone, uh, this is probably the worst song that we've talked about from talked about from them. Like they've so had a, far, or so, fu so far, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but there is a part in this that Phil Collins samples the fuck out of, and there must be some misunderstanding. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. Because I got to that part, and I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, he takes a part out of this. Um, but, yeah, other than that, like, it's it, it's okay. It, you're right. It is slower. Um, but I like I like Sly to be uh, Sly to be a little slick. Uh, slick and quick. Not a prick, though. Ooh, don't like, ooh, don't like <laughs> the way that sounded. Oh, God. Uh, all right. So, uh, with that, let's move on to, yeah, come again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, not. Maybe not come again, Mister Producer Man. That's okay, cool. moving on to number two forty nine. The night they drove old Dixie down by the band Brooklyn. Uh, you got your. You got to use your Uno reverse card last time, so you get to start this time. Uh, yeah, no, this is a this is a cool cool song by, by the band. Um, I think a lot of people has that have this as like their number two. I think it's between this and Ophelia and Up on Cripple Creek as like the number two band song. Um, but this is I like the kind of like the the build off I guess in the chorus where they build up all that tension and like I like the part when I get to like I remember it oh so well and then like the night they drove old Dixie down and you hear like these like crashing cymbals and like the piano the piano slows down. Um this is also it's also a jarring song because it's it's the one that has it features like the I forget his name, but the singer with a very like marbly kind of voice. The um, one that sounds like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> yes, the one that sounds like Kermit the Frog. Um, Let's be honest; he sounds like Kermit the Frog if you made the country he, song. He, he kind of does. If you if you're listen if you're like at a the band concert, it's not as jarring because you're already used to that sound. But when you open with him, yes. it takes a second to be like, "Oh yeah, we're listening to the band." Um, so, other than that, like. It kind of sucks because he, I feel like he work. Why he works so good in the weight is that he is just he's just enough of a different voice in like the later part of it where it kind of adds some charm to it. But to have to have it start with that is uh, is yeah not not ideal. I guess I would say now, but this is like fucking like forty years later. So or no, well over forty years later. I'm conflicted. Uh, yeah. So. It's it sounds good. The band are an incredibly talented band. Um, it's it lyrically though, I can't quite place if they're sympathetic for the Confederacy or if they're sympathetic for the people who were just kind of like affected by the war. Uh, 
So, like, with that, I'm just, like, a little conflicted on this. Otherwise, sounds really good. I may have made a crack about, um, I can't remember the, the singer's name, but uh, I may have made a crack about his voice, but I actually think it's good. I think it's effective. I think that it works. Um, I, I, I need to dig deeper into the song in order to have a true opinion, I think. Oh, and Brooklyn's gone. Uh, well... Melissa, you have officially become the co-host of, like, <laughs> Off the Stones. Uh, what are your thoughts on this song as my new co-host? Um, I don't like this song. It's slow. It's too country-ish for me. And, like, it's just boring. And it's just like, oh, dick shit that. Like, it's just, like, it's, too, it's just too much for me. I don't like it. <laughs> well, I pressed the search on the wrong tab. So... Oh. <laughs> Well, that's okay. Uh, I think I was just trying to get the uh, the singer's name. I think it's Garth Hudson, but I could be wrong. I think you're right. Um, but there are so many singers in that band. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's an expert on this group, so oh, I trust yeah. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as my new co-host, I'm going to listen to her opinion. Uh, <laughs> so moving on to number... 248 on the 2010 list. Uh, Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher uh, by Jackie Wilson. Uh, I'm going to have Melissa start with this one because I can already see her moving and grooving over there. Yeah, I, I really like this song. I like the part where he says higher. Like, it, he goes higher too and it's just, it's, it's good vibes. I feel like this is the type of song you would hear at like the end of a wrong calm or something. Like, you know, just like, yay, happy ending. <laughs> They're together. Uh, so, yeah. I like it. <laughs> Brooklyn, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I really like this song. Um, this song is actually sampled by a Atlantic Canadian rapper by the name of Classified. Uh, and I am going to share uh, share the song with you and put it in the chat. Um, but wow. uh, yeah, I just I like the energy of it and especially like the chorus as well. Just has. Um, just brings a lot of brings a lot of emo emotion in, into it. I'm kind of surprised that this, this one came off of the list. Um, in that, uh, what's the word that you use to describe? Oh no, is this a Stax record? Like, would this be a Stax record era, or would this be? Um, so I think this is Motown, but I think that us, I think that it's a good comparison. Um, because it does have the like the deep bass and like the horns and uh it does kind of have that soul of a Stax record. I think it's Motown though. I'm not entirely positive. I didn't do a lot of research for this episode. Sorry y'all. Um, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, haphazard episode, baby. Those are the best. <laughs> um so first of all, uh Brooklyn, um, yeah, send that. Uh, we'll attach it to the comment, not the comment section, the, um, the the information section below, whatever it's called again. Once again, I think it's I, I think the description has the description, Franco, thank you. or no, uh, yeah, no, or the Ray, Raylan yeah. Johnson. I don't know, one of the older older YouTubers. <laughs> we'll send, Easy we'll waiter. It, we'll sit it. In, we'll put it in the description if I remember to tell Mr. Editor Man to put that in there. Um, but. This is one of my top 100, possibly, songs of all time. Uh, okay. I wow. friggin' love this song. From the jangly guitar that opens it up, and then suddenly you get the slap of, like, I think it's a tambourine. Uh, and then you get the percussions and that bass. That bass is so good in this. It's just so funky and groovy. Um, and then Jackie Wilson just sounds incredible on this song like that man's range was nuts uh and if there's just like this great wonderful energy to this that you can't help but at least do like that little shake with your uh, shoulders thing where you do like from the side to side it, it's one of the it's one of my favorite pieces of all time i really love that um if that affects my answers at the end who knows? Spoilers, possibly. Uh, <laughs> but let's move on to number 247, Give Me Some Lovin' by the Spencer Davis Group. Uh, this song is great. Uh, you've got that incredible bass line. Uh, you got those perfect drums. And, oh, my God, it's got the exact same energy as your love keeps lifting me higher and higher, to be completely honest with you. Um, 
I but I do really love this song a lot. That bass line is dope. Uh, and then you add, as I said, you add the drums on there, and it's got this wild, raucous energy to it, especially once that organ comes in. Yo, that is such a bolt of energy uh, to that song. Um, and uh, Spencer Davis sounds really good on this. Uh, it's it, it's a good driving song. I think this is a good like beginning of a road trip. So th- this song is mint. Uh, I'm a little upset that it's not on the current list. I guess I get it, but I think it probably should be. Uh, Brooklyn, let's go to you next. Um, this if this song were any richer, it would be Eggs Benedict with shaved truffles over top of this. Uh, this Brooklyn, is have uh, you had dinner yet? <laughs> uh, I have, yeah. I actually had the I had the, I had brisket fried rice. It was uh, it was delicious. Oh, what is that? Oh, just go. It sounds go. great. Uh, it, it was it was divine. Um, but yeah, this song is like the baseline from my Sharona with the energy of like King Richard or not King Richard, a uh, little, not, 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 not a little King Richard. <laughs> yeah. A uh, little Richard um, and like Chuck Berry, but then that, but then that organ comes in and it just, it's like put super up front in the mix. Um, and I agree with Andrew that it's a kind of a, kind of a road trip song, but it's, um, it's overwhelming, I guess I would say at times. Wow, interesting. Uh, Melissa, were you overwhelmed by this song? I don't know if I was overwhelmed, but it's funny that you say about the road trip thing, because I thought the same thing as well. Like, it just reminds me of, like, being in traffic or something and, like, listening to this song. Um, I I feel like I may have heard this song before. Not sure, but I like that I was able to, like, rediscover it or listen to it to the first time on this list, because I, I really enjoyed it a lot. It's definitely a 60s era yeah. movie kind of mm-hmm. song totally uh, it, like imagine if they're going out like i don't know shopping or something like that that's probably playing in the background uh as we move on to something that's reminiscent of the 60s but not from the 60s love shack by the b52s <laughs> i'm going to contain my excitement uh let's start with melissa on this one um this song fucking is awesome yeah! and, I'm so, <laughs> and i'm so sad that it's not on the list because i would definitely put this on probably like my personal I, I i've never contemplated what my personal like top 100 or top 500 look like but i would imagine that this would probably be on there somewhere uh i love the b52s i feel like i i love the vocalists like they're weird kind of <laughs> oh, eccentric yeah. vibe uh to it like and this song's just like a party song, fucking awesome. Like, yeah, <laughs> and and the music video is awesome too. Dope ass <laughs> music video. I agree with that. Brooklyn, what are your thoughts? Uh, Fred Schneider is kind of a genius, considering that he is purely a self-taught guitar player. Um, and I just like. I'm, I I agree with Melissa. I'm I'm shocked that this song is off, off of the list because uh, it just had it's so much fucking fun. And I think love I think just the love shack is a little place where we can get together is one of the catchiest lines um, in in the uh, like in music. And then the way the song ends, it's like you're what? Hey, Rusty. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, yeah, I think everybody sings it like they like they actually know what it means. But Brooklyn, uh, no one knows what it means, but it's provocative. I like it. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, we have Rock Lobster on there. Um, I never had the B52 shot. It looks disgusting. Uh, but this, uh, but this song is. <laughs> have you guys? Have you ever heard of a, heard of the B52 shots? No. no tell, me, gonna... tell me about it. Um, Andrew, talk while I Google it. Uh, okay, well, he's but this is something, yeah, like this is something that's sold in liquor stores here. Like, is that not a thing? Nope. All right. <laughs> um. So, uh, I, n- not to be, not to be that will actually guy. Real quick, uh, Ricky Wilson is the guitarist. Um, but Fred Schneider's voice on this thing, the way he uses his voice, he's so smart because he's got <laughs> such a weirdly distinct like nasal voice mm-hmm. but he knows exactly how to use it to his advantage um and then i had to look up their names because i have so much respect for these two women even though i don't 
know their names. Uh, Kate Pearson and Cindy Wilson. Uh, my God, the two of them, their voices blend so well together. Uh, their voices are just like sh- sugary sweet, but in like the best way possible. The energy of this song is off the friggin' charts. Like, you throw this on, and at least 90% of the wedding ball, like, dance floor is going to be going friggin' nuts. And then the other 10% are wrong. Um, yeah, but the lyrics are kind of nothing. Uh, but you know what? That's okay. Because that tin roof rusted part, like, <laughs> I got me a sign. It's as big as a whale, and it's about to set sail, baby. Yeah. The, I... I don't have anything cohesive or coherent to say about this song because I just love it so much. I'm geeking out. So. Uh, producer man, can you share my can you share my screen? Sure. So this is a B fifty two. Uh, it is coffee liqueur, Irish cream, and Grand Marnier. This is something that is regularly sold in Canadian liquor stores. Okay, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> oh, I get it because it's like a bomb, like a like an uh, almost like an Irish car bomb. Oh, yeah, those are delicious. Bomber. They are those. Delicious. Those look fucking disgusting. It's like, hey, you want to have Bailey's and a thing of uh, gravy with mashed potatoes on top? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I do. All right, mm. Mr. Producer Man, take this off. Mr. Producer, Man, are you you're thinking about this, aren't you? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so. Let's move on to number 244, uh, Stand by Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, well, I'll start by saying this. Um, man, this sure is a Sly and the Family Stone song. I've got really nothing else to say about this song. This song is the weakest of the Sly and the Family Stone songs that we've talked about, in my opinion. Uh, there's, It's got one line that hasn't aged very well like at all yeah <laughs> uh and then i don't get sly and the family stone until like the last 45 seconds where i go oh yeah this is sly and the family stone uh because otherwise it's a song that's just kind of there uh brooklyn so remember, uh, remember Robin Sparkles on How I Met Your Mother, where she oh. had like, where she had like that big song like "Let's Go to the Mall," and she's like, "I'm gonna do Sandcastles in the Sand to prove that I'm an artistic and cheap person." This is the most, this is the song where Sly and the Family Stone are like, "I'm gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be here." I think we found our clip. Uh, of the episode. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I can't even. <laughs> I'll give you a chance to breathe. We'll come back to you. I promise, Melissa. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I don't uh, think that's I all can I gotta say. That. Uh, yeah, I just remember ahead. listening to this, and yeah, that one line was like, ouch, <laughs> this is not good. It's not good. So, <laughs> and I don't have anything else to add. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it, it's sand castles in the sand. Uh, all right, so moving on to uh, number 243, The Wanderer by Dion. Uh, Brooklyn. I'm going to go to you first because uh, we've talked about Dion before and uh, I want to see how much you like this compared to the last time. Uh, yeah, this is a kind of, you know how we're talking about like songs that you can dance to and songs that you can also do dishes to. This is kind of like when you do in between where it's like you're doing dishes, but you're kind of bored, but it's like, Oh, Hey, so like, let's like, you want, let's want to dance for a little bit. Like, like you kind of turn like household stuff into like a date with this song or like you'd like like this is kind of the perfect song to like like walk home to i guess like on like a starlit kind of night um yeah Yeah. i like i like the kind of vibes that it brings dion's fine i i like this been kind of batting a thousand so far hasn't given me a bad song so uh we'll see how they go from here melissa i'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this one 
Yeah, I mean, the song's about him kind of being like a player and multiple lovers or whatever, but like, I vibe with it. Like, I, I, I think it's a good song. It's super catchy. Um, yeah. I don't uh, have a pro- problem with it, though. He definitely has the charisma to pull that off. Not a lot of yeah. people do. Um, so Brooklyn got to bring up his obscure reference on the last song. I'm going to bring up my obscure <laughs> reference on this one. Uh, the greatest use of this song of all time is during Chicken Run when the, the rooster is on the tricycle and he's playing this song on the radio. Uh, that is the greatest use of this song of all time. I dare you to fight me. Um, but yeah, Dion is one of those guys that I need to do a deeper dive into because Brooklyn's right. He's batting a thousand right now. He's got a good swagger to him where he's, as I said, he's able to pull this off. He was kind of like the bad boy of his time in a sense um, and I think that the sound of this is actually really good with like the backing vocals creating this like almost like echoey effect. Um, yeah, I th- not really much to say about this one other than it's really great. Uh, this is another road trip one for me. Definitely goes into the road trip playlist. And let's move on to number 241. I Fall to Pieces by Patsy Cline. Now, I know that there's someone on this panel who has uh, feelings about Patsy Cline, so I'm going to save them for last. Uh, Brooklyn, let's go to you first. (laughs) Oh, okay. Oh, ooh, interesting. All right. So, uh, Patsy Cline is like a jazz standard. Um, uh, This song and Crazy, uh, like, she's just kind of perfect. I really like the or like the like the baseline in this. Uh, her delivery uh, is just is swell. Um, it's yeah, it's got a lovely like it's got a really really cool really cool vibe to it. And I'm kind of kicking myself for not knowing as much Patsy Cline as it should because she's someone that needs to be talked about more. Like it's crazy that this song got cut, but we have fucking. Bad Bunny, we have Bad and Bougie, we have Little Uzi Verse, <laughs> Patsy Cline couldn't have, I, did she have, only have the one song? She only had Crazy. Yeah, which is fucking okay. ridiculous. Uh, and Brooklyn, I agree with you. It is fucking ridiculous. Uh, Patsy Cline is fantastic. Uh, the fact that this is the only other Patsy Cline song that we're going to be talking about on this series is frustrating because Walking After Midnight is a fucking perfect song. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but she's got that that bluesy standard to her with that con- with that, that little bit of countryness to her. Um, her voice is fantastic. It is so good. Um, and her control is it's fantastic. Um, lyrically, it's got that kind of like sadness to it that's like re- that really effective um but i know that there's someone else on this call who also loves patsy klein and i'm gonna pass it off to her melissa yes so um this is like the song that made me want to be on the episode like a thousand percent when kind i saw this figured. uh because like no offense like this list is fine but you know a lot of them are just fine but like this song is amazing like i i it makes me sad that it's not on the top 500 uh, list for sure. Um, I mean, for me personally, though, I this was like a go-to back in high school. Like, you know, when a boy <laughs> broke up with me or something. Uh, this is totally like, you know, breakup song playlist. Uh, it, it, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. De- definitely on there. Um, and uh, I know you guys don't know me that well, but like I love sad girl music like that is my jam and like this to me is like the godmother of all (laughs) sad (laughs) girl music (laughs) like i feel like this is where it started uh at least for in my book so uh question your stance on casey musgraves i i love casey musgraves we need to talk immediately after the show um because there are some uh yeah I think I know where you're going with this. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, we'll talk after the show. Yeah. Uh, awesome. <laughs> so, moving on to number 239, I've Got a Woman by Ray Charles. Um, so, I'm going to start us off with this one. Uh, this song is really good. 
Uh, it's got a good bounce to it. Ray Charles sounds fantastic. The instrumentation, of course, is amazing. And then we get to the end of the second verse where he says the line, uh, she knows a woman's place is right there now in her home. And boy, this song has not aged well. Uh, it has <laughs> aged pretty badly, which is really sad because otherwise outside of that kind of mentality that this song has it's really good but i'm okay with it falling off the list now because of how it has of how dated that it has kind of become um otherwise ray charles is a genius i love ray charles we can keep this song away uh melissa yeah unfortunately the first time i ever kind of heard this was from Kanye West, Gold Digger, like him stealing that. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I I heard this original song until several years, you know, later. Um, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't age super well. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to say about it. <laughs> Honestly, that's fair. <laughs> Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a this is like one of the. But uh, words are hard. Uh, this is a great Ray Charles song. If you can't, if you can't talk about what I'd say, parts one and two, um, or is it what I'd what I'd say, or what did I say? What I say. Okay, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm just glad that the man formerly known as uh, Kanye West, uh, officially now known as Ye, uh, took this took this song that. and uh, and and made made yeah. like a 2005 bop. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's uh, arguably one of Yee's greatest songs. Uh, <laughs> Yee. Uh, number 230, <laughs> Every Day by Buddy Holly and the Crickets. I, I, I just want to remind you guys, some people in your country want him to be president in, 20, in 2024. I just, <laughs> I just want to like, settle in yes. for a second. Yeah. Um, I'm good, thanks. Uh, so, uh, let's have Melissa start with this. Uh, yeah, that green Mr. Producer Man. <laughs> Just, <laughs> no. Uh, but Melissa, what did you think of uh, Every Day by Buddy Holly and the Crickets? Um, I love a song. Uh, the first time I ever heard it was, um, in Big Fish. Yep. Uh, it's when, uh, he's going to go find, uh, Sandra and, like, profess his love to her. So it was, like, the first time I heard this song. And then I kind of went down, like, a Buddy Holly uh rabbit hole <laughs> uh and i i do really enjoy him i mean i i think in the grand <sighs> scheme of things he's fine like in like all artists ever like he's fine but i i really do enjoy him and i really love this song oh my god i'm so happy right now because for months <laughs> months of doing this show i've been on a fucking island uh let's say brooklyn for last um <laughs> Woo! Now knowing that, uh, yeah, so uh, I really like Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Um, I don't love everything that they've ever done, but this this is one that I, it had to grow on me, like the same way you were about um, one of the previous songs that we talked about, Paranoid Android. Um, I didn't like this one at first. Uh, I thought it was just kind of there. It was okay. And then, like, the more I listen to it, the more it this song is just like really sweet. It's so charming and like really nice to listen to. Um, I had to look up the instrument because I thought it was a glockenspiel, but apparently it's not. It's called Did you a just song. curse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you want to hear me do it again. Uh, can, can you? The uh, the producers are actually asking if you could say that a little closer into the microphone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, a glockenspiel. Um, <laughs> But it's actually called a Celesta. Um, that yeah, the Celesta in this adding that nice little, that little twinkly element to it, it's such a great touch, and it's not something that I hear the foundation of a song generally as. I don't I generally I don't like hear that kind of instrumentation as like your anchor for the song, and I think it works incredibly effectively. It's a very pretty, very sweet, charming song, Brooklyn. You know why you don't hear Celesta as the bass for a lot of songs? Because uh, it's used in so many Christmas songs and so many holiday songs and that when you hear this song, it kind of takes you to that vibe. 
Like I think of this as I think of this as like a wintry, wintry kind of kind of vibe where it's like because I've always associated that sound with like snowflakes and like kind of. But you call me. Of, <laughs> I wish I had a microphone here. Uh, I, I I said I I said the word snowflake in describing the sound of a celestial, uh, which is a form of a piano, um, but it's also it's like kind of like the love child of a piano and a xylophone. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, fine. I, Buddy Holly was the I think the least uh, of the day the music died of the three. People. Wow, wow, that is rough. All right, I mean, moving on. Yeah, uh, nope, nope, moving on. Brooklyn, <laughs> we're getting away from gang's territory. Number two thirty-seven. Oh look, it's your favorite band. It's the Birds. Uh, I I'll feel a whole lot better. <laughs> I can't. I can't anymore. Um, you know what, Melissa? You seem like you're a big fan of birds. Let them you go first. Um, the song's good. It's good vibes. It's like I don't know. Reminds me of the 1960s for sure. Uh, good use of tambourine. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. I'm okay with it being off the list. Brooklyn heard the birds and tambourine and immediately had like nom style flashbacks. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I'm gonna go second because I apparently love the birds, according to Brooklyn. Um, but out of all of the songs by the birds that we've covered, uh, this is easily the best one in my opinion. And the fact that this is off the list and the other two we've talked about are on the list, I'm so confused. Uh, this one's actually got like a good groove. It's got a good tempo. Uh, the vocals are actually like really good. Um, it's nothing that I would call like extremely special, but it's a solid like '60s rock song. Uh, I really I, I dig this one, but Brooklyn. What were the other um, two that you guys have talked about? Uh, Eight Miles High and Mr. Tambourine Man. Okay, sorry. I think I would take Eight Miles High over this, but definitely this over Mr. Tambourine Man. Um, I feel like what happened is, is that the birds asked if they could copy Elvis Costello's homework, but Elvis is like, all right, you got to change it a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, th these, these two sound very similar in terms of like how they're, how they're arranged, like the guitar and the drums and whatnot. When it comes to these two, I'm going like, like these, like this song and Al Al or Elvis Costello's style is kind of like comparing like McDonald's Burger King, where it's like it's they're kind of offering the same thing. Brooklyn but I'm gonna eat something. I, I I did. I just I like food. Okay, <laughs> food is a passion. There can be other passions than music, Andrew. Um, Such as. Oh, you said just, food. Okay, food. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I like El I like Elvis Costello better when he does this stuff. Um, the birds can can keep their doing their twelve string acoustic covers and somehow make the list. Okay, all right. Well, moving on to number two thirty five, we go from the birds to the animals uh, with "We Got to Get Out of This Place." And I'm going to have Brooklyn start us off with this. God damn it! Um... <laughs> you need your Uno reverse card. I got you. All right, I'll go first. I guess. Uh, um. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, you go. Okay. Uh. So. I like this better than the last one that we talked about when it comes to the, uh, the animals. Um, I, and I'm blanking on the name so hard of that last animal song that we talked about. But it's the Nina Simone one. Um, I think that this plays to the animal's strengths more. Uh, it plays to the wild, like, almost bluesy vocals. Uh, it plays to the strength of the uh, the backing vocals, and it plays to the strength of like. Uh, don't let me be misunderstood. Thank you. Don't let me be misunderstood. Uh, was the other one that we had talked about. Um, but yeah, this plays to all of the strengths that the animals have. I think the main problem is that I don't think that the song is written strongly for the animals. Uh, the song was originally written for the Righteous Brothers. Uh, that's right, the guys who did Unchained <laughs> Melody. Oh, <my. laughs> yeah, them. Oh, song. <laughs> this song was written with them in mind, and then the animals got it and like made tweaks. 
and I can kind of tell this was written for someone else. Even though, as I said, all of the strengths that the animals have are there. But I can tell it was written for someone else. Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, this is okay. It's pretty standard 60s, 60s vibe. Um, has elements of like the doors with like the keys. I think there's some, I think some like vocal tendencies that are similar to like the Who. Um, it's just kind of like one of those median songs. Um, not necessarily like superb. I think 235 is high if this is going to be on the mm -hmm. top 100 songs list. Um, but yeah, other, other. Good, like, British invasion acts, I guess I would say. And Melissa. Yeah, I don't have too much to add, but I do particularly like the parts of the song where, like, they're kind of screaming or, like, mm -hmm. yelling. Like, that that's the kind of part of the song that I like the most. But, yeah, it's its fine. It's mediocre. Meh. Yeah. As you said, like, when they get to show off, like, their rock and roll side. Yeah. Absolutely. But. Yeah. All right, let's move into one spot above it last time, which was 234, Only the Lonely by Roy Orbison. Brooklyn, you got to use your reverse card. Yeah. So let's I, uh, no, I, I, uh, I was hard on Roy Orbison last time. Um, with a yeah, which was song. wild. Uh, yeah, I think this is a, this is a great friggin' uh, Roy Orbison song because it's like, it kind of takes the theatrical side of him and the vo like his his voice. I think this is a really good job of uh, showing off his range. He has some really nice falsetto at, at the end, um, and it just has like that waltzy kind of waltzy kind of feel to it. Um, I'm surprised that this one came off of the list, um, but uh, yeah, spoiler alert: there's going to be other Roy Orbison songs that we're talking about soon um, that are like, I, yeah. It's weird that the it's weird whenever they were going to the list, and it's like, all right, we're gonna prune off some of these leaves, and and I feel like they kind of pruned off a couple of good leaves, and they're like, oh, these are the ones that we're gonna fill with Bad Bunny and Billie Eilish, and thank you next. <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, Melissa. Um, I love Roy Orbison. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I love sad girl music. He's like sad boy music, and I fucking love it. Um, like low key. I've contemplated this that I want to get his face tattooed to my ass because of jokes, because of the water boy. Anyways, um, I love this song. I think it's great. Um, there's definitely a sadness to it, but I also think it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. Would you get Roy Orbison tattooed on your ass or a different member of the Traveling Wilburys? Uh, Roy. Yeah, right. I'd probably I'd probably get George. Yeah, probably, I'm a George fan myself. Fair, but like, if I'm gonna get a tattoo of one of them anywhere on my body, it's Roy. The, like, come on, those sunglasses are friggin' iconic. I don't know. Um, Tom Petty's also up there too. He'd have a. Yeah, but what's the most iconic part of Tom Petty? Like his hair, his nose, like. Uh, all uh, both. Well, and apparently he like wore the glasses because of strict stage fright. Like he was. He's very, like, nervous, so I identify with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and honestly, the way that Roy Orbison writes music makes complete sense to hear that. Um, but you're right. I think Roy Orbison might be, like, the original sad boy of rock and roll. Uh, and I think that I'm glad that he kind of gets a resurgence every once in a while. Like, he was big in the 50s, kind of dipped. Then the 80s came around and suddenly he was like giant again, kind of died down. And then suddenly he's like a big, like his music is like a part of the Star is Born, the Bradley Cooper one. Like suddenly there was like a small resurgence there again. Um, but yeah, he, he writes these like beautiful, melancholic, epic, lush instrumentation. And his voice is just so incredible. Um, yeah, this is, like, good sad boy music. Like, the kind of sad boy music that, like, other sad boy music should try to be. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, let's move on to the last song in this section of the list, which was number 232, Just Like a Woman by Bob Dylan. I was gonna save you for last anyway, but we're gonna save you for last. Uh, <laughs> this song is not one of Bob Dylan's best. <laughs> Uh, 
really isn't. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather listen to um, She's Only a Woman to me. Uh, I was listening to this song and I immediately thought to myself, wow, I'd rather be listening to Billy Joel right now. Um, like, there's nothing about this song to me that, like, sticks out in a way that makes me want to come back to this. Like, nothing. Nothing at all. I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. I love you, but, like, this is not one of your best outings. Brooklyn. There's one thing about this that I would come back to, and it's the, the guitar work. I think the guitar work is kind of sweet, but other than that, this song is fucking trash. Like, it, it's the exact opposite, I feel like, of what he's kind of known for, like those wordy, lengthy kind of songs. And then it kind of just boils down to the chorus of, oh, just like a woman. Um, man, it's, the Bob Dylan is so bad, we even got a cast. We, we even got the fourth guest to be like, all right, let me, uh, let me, <laughs> let me talk about my, my disdain for Bob Dylan. After you guys. Um... I mean, I'm kind of hit and miss with Bob Dylan, to be honest. But oh, overall, I do like him. But I really don't like this song. I mean, it's just, it's offensive as a woman. Uh, yep. Like, what the hell? What, like, I would really love to sit down with him and understand his thought process of why, why, why. Was, was <laughs> Brooklyn, was this the album before Blood on the Tracks? Uh, to the Googles. Because if that's the case... Or actually to the Spotify's. Yeah, to the Spotify's. Because if that's the case, he was going through a pretty messy relationship at the time. Uh, <laughs> if if it's not that album, then yeah, I have no, I have no excuse. <laughs> like, literally zero. You, you're right. <laughs> this, this is pretty bad. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. We've all been heartbroken. I get it. But damn. <laughs> the whole wonder... Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Blood on the Tracks was 1975, and Blonde on Blonde uh, is where is Blonde on Blonde? Do do do, do, do fill in the fill in the empty space. Do 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 do. do, do. No, that's a yeah. This is a uh, ten. This is almost ten years before. Um. Cool. I, I have no excuse then. There's no excuse. No, no. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Bob. It's just a real bad song. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of sad that we end on that one. What a stinker so. to end on. <laughs> I know, right? Especially considering I know what begins the next episode. And uh, yeah. a little bit okay. better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tell you that much. Um, all right. So uh, with that being said, we're moving into the final section of the show where we ask the three questions that we ask every guest. Uh, and the first question is, and I think I know what the answer is already, which one of these songs should have never made the list to even begin with? In unison, guys. Three, Three two, two, one. Just, just like a woman. Like yeah, a yeah woman. just like a woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, are, there are some that I think are, like, semi-duds. Uh, like, I would also have considered Mac the Knife because, who oh boy, does it sincerely miss the point of that song. Um, but yeah, I think we're all in unison on that one. Is this the first? Is this the first time we all agreed on this question? Uh no, no. This is the okay. second time that we the second time that we said it all together. Um, we're two <laughs> for three on that. Um, but we have had three songs, I believe, that mo like we were pretty well like unanimous on. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Which song? should be put back on the official list and uh, only one sorry guys only one um let's start with brooklyn on this one i am gonna be a pretentious hipster and say that paranoid android needs to go back onto the list wow. um it's, it was honestly between that and he's a rebel um but i think i yeah, i think the musicality in paranoid android needs to be recognized there it is okay um good choice yeah. I think that's a good choice. I don't disagree. I, I am going to pick Where Are You. Uh, I think the one that's structured the best and is like the best song technically is Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson. I think the instrumentation is strong. The vocal melody is strong. The actual singing is strong. The lyrics are strong. 
everything about this from a technical standpoint is pristine in my opinion um but melissa out of all of the songs that we've talked about which is the most deserving of being put back onto the list yeah i'm in between two but i'm going with my heart it's i fall to pieces by pets clan absolutely like that's the reason why i was going to be on this episode and it hasn't changed like fucking love the song and people need to listen to it more and just patsy klein more in general oh agreed better cup of grease <laughs> oh my so my so uh, a thing that i forgot to mention about the song because it features i think the the, the jordan airs um yes. but if you uh, but if you're skimming by that you'll might you guys ever ever familiar hear the term jardin air it's like a it's like a condiment that you throw in a beef sandwich oh my god eat something <laughs> I like all the food talk. Keep going. I mean, me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, well, I mean, it's between that and like I've also been watching the bear, um, and the bear is a really good. Yes, uh, it's yeah, good. Please go watch the bear. Good show. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So, finally, uh, is the song that you picked your favorite song on this section of the list, or is there something else that you actually like better? Uh, and let's start with Melissa this time. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> Um, okay. It is it is my favorite song on the list. Uh, I fall to pieces. By Patsy Klein. Um, yeah, the other song that was in between picking for the last uh, question was "Love Jack" by B Fifty Two. Because I just that song is just so fun. Like this is great. Well, I'm glad you said <laughs> that because that is my pick. "Love Jack" by the B Fifty Twos. I fucking love that song. Uh, that song comes on immediately. You hear the drums. Yeah, and I immediately start screaming inside. So uh, remember how we were talking about "Beautiful Day" uh, with Cody, and they're like, "We're like, man, all the nostalgia for it, but it kind of sucks." Take out, take oh, away all. No, 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 no. But listen to me first. Take away all the sucks. It's like you have the nostalgia for it, but it's also just a great song. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. God, my, I'm gonna have to go to the hospital. <laughs> my chest is convulsing. Uh, Brooklyn, what is your pick for? What is the your favorite it's, song it, in this? It's it's the same one. It's it's still paranoid, paranoid Android. Um, yeah. I just, I love the groove in that. Okay. Well, uh, with that being said, uh, Melissa, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for being my co host for this episode, apparently. Um, is there anything, uh, any last words that you'd like to say before we pop off? No, uh, thank you for having me. It was a great time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Brooklyn, we did it. We got through another episode somehow. We haven't We're... burned this place down. Uh, no, uh, we've almost hit, we're like approaching, or yeah, we've, we're over 30, like total episodes, um, yep. after this ser series is over, we're on 35, um, and then, yeah, some st other stuff has just started to hit the back burner, um, so I can't wait for that to kind of, kind of stew and have all the flavors get to know each other there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yum. Um. Yeah, so uh, we've got two more episodes left in this series uh, to go. Um, and uh, a special, as Brooklyn said, we have something on the back burner for uh, season three. Um, Going to be a little bit longer than this season. Uh, and also we have another special project that um, we are working on down the line. Uh, I don't know when exactly that will air. It'll either air... Uh, before the season finale or after the season finale. Um, but with that being said, y'all, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, like and subscribe to the video store. Oh, and also, I forgot, because I should have added this at the beginning of the show. Buy our motherfucking shit! Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, uh, thank you again uh, for Melissa, for Brooklyn, and for myself, Andrew James Barr. Keep on rocking.